The Annoying Village Boy influenced, uh, influences so many people across the globe, oh, myself wow. included, my family. Um, you know, we're happy with what you're doing. Uh, we're happy with what your friends are doing, promoting the continent, and um, we're excited for, for what the continent holds. What actually happened, I actually saw a video by a YouTuber named Wonamaya. This smile. <laughs> you're too much. Yeah. Chief. Okay, you're good. I like to be seeing you every day. Uh, Ramadan Karim to each and every Muslim watching Watermaya. I wish you all the best in this year, Ramadan. Listen, I would love to join you guys, man, because the last time that I fasted, I really enjoyed it. Ramadan is the most important month of the year for us, for Muslims all over the world. It's a month where we get to regain, strengthen our consciousness with Allah, unlearn all bad habits, and most importantly, put yourself in someone else's shoes of less fortunate. Feel self-discipline within your body while fasting. And you could think of it like a 30-day retreat with Allah. It's a moment to connect with your spirit because I have experienced this myself and I feel so connected. And believe me, I wanted to do this for just a few days but I think I'll go for 30 days. So this year, I'm gonna try my best. I'm not gonna do 30 days, but definitely gonna do 15 days. I'm chilling like a boss, man. A big shout out to Star Property. Like I said, we're trying to build a luxury enclave in here. So if you wanna build your million dollar house behind or beside one of Maya's million dollar house, you need to check out the link in the description. Make sure you talk to engineer Viglo and he's definitely gonna give you a good deal. So this episode was actually made possible by the CEO of ANC Mall. He reached out to me this afternoon and he told me that there's a group of doctors that came to Ghana because of my YouTube videos. Can you believe it? Anytime I hear things like this, I really want to shed tears because I never knew that telling stories in front of camera will inspire the world for them to choose Africa as a place to be. And this actually motivates me. It inspires me not to stop what I started. And believe me, your likes, your subscription, your comments also encourage me to do more. So you know, if you're watching this video, make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe. It's 10 p.m. and all we need to do right now is to go to the restaurant and go surprise the family. Listen, we gotta do this and I have to do this with you all. So come with me, let's go. Tell you guys let me know which of my videos are your favorite and let me know has my video ever convinced you to go to a particular country let's get interactive in the comment section because for me I feel like I'm just doing what I love man and I never knew what I love is actually inspiring a lot of people it's incredible man just come with me so I'm calling the man behind the surprise Hi. I can come with more bed, more hot bed. Five minutes, I'll be there. Okay, we'll move out. Okay, who is Shemi Abontina? I'm a Shemi Abontina. I don't want to chew on. I'm a person. I'm a person. All right, okay, all right. This man is really playing along. He's not even speaking. He's not even speaking English so that they can have an idea of what is going to happen. So he's speaking the local dialect, which is interesting. You know where we're going, by the way. <laughs> we finally got to our location, but let me tell you something. If anybody tells you that there is no money in Ghana. Don't believe them, man, because as I go in here, bro, the cars that I'm seeing, this place looks like rich people hang out, man. But hey, more than my, I guess I'm also rich, man. Yo, but this is Kozo, and uh, let's go in and find out what goes in here. Oh, 
You don't? That's Woody Maya. You know, someone told me that you came to this country because of me. Well, that's true. How can you follow the annoying village boy? Well, uh, the annoying village boy influenced, uh, influences so many people across the globe. Oh, myself wow. included, my family. Um, you know, we're happy with what you're doing. Uh, we're happy with what your friends are doing, promoting the continent. And um, we're excited for, for what the continent holds. That's interesting. Yeah. But all the countries that I've been promoting, why Ghana? Ghana is special in a lot of ways. It's close to Nigeria, where my ancestors are from. It's uh, English-speaking Africa, so I don't have to learn a new language. Uh, there's so many um, Ghanaians who grew up in Nigeria. You both grew up in Nigeria. Yeah. You know, so... Uh, um, we have so many friends, so it's, it's like an extension, you know, um, it's just another state in Africa, right? So... Are you visiting us or you are moving? I'm visiting right now, I would like to move. If you, if you give me a, an opportunity, if you, if you welcome me, I'll move. Mr. Samoa, can you just give him the opportunity now so that he can stay with us forever? <laughs> what do you say, Edmund? <laughs> Plenty of opportunities. Plenty of opportunities. <laughs> you just have to pick which one you want. Right, right, right. So when I see the opportunities, uh, I'll... How, how long have you been here? Uh, this is our first week. First week? Yeah. yeah. But I can see that you came with three beautiful women. Yes, I did. <laughs> Only for you? That's how I roll. <laughs> That's how I you, roll. You all came with him? Yes, we did. I, I hope my videos did not inspire you guys to come here. Yes, they Please did. Please say no. Yes, they did. Oh, yes? Yes, yes they, they did. did. Wow. You are doing an excellent job of traveling while most of us were on lockdown. So you were providing us content that was life-giving, right? So that's how I, I for one, um, I got hooked on your content when you went to Nigeria. There are places that I don't even know of. Brothers and sisters, are you ready? Welcome to the federal capital territory of Nigeria. I am Maya. And also just listening to people's stories, right? Um, you just take it for granted that, you know, people just are successful. But, you know, you now realize that there are challenges along the way. And that's quite encouraging. Whoa. Yeah. So even the, the video with Innocent, I was like, wow. Or the video with uh, uh, the owner of Airpiece. Uh -huh. And then also the video of the guy that makes pa paints in Enugu. Enugu. Yes. And wow. then also the Gambian innocent. guy. He did innocent. The Gambian, the, the Gambian guy, guy. That has in the real estate in Port yeah. Harcourt. And the guy you, you interviewed when you were in Gambia yeah. over the holidays. Uh, which other ones? Uh, with all the other. Yeah, and all the, the other, other YouTubers, YouTubers yeah, that we were not aware of. Like, know. you know, even in Ghana, Vanessa Kambi, Miss Trudy. That's, you know, that's inspiring. And other parts of, of Africa, right? That we don't so, see. That we don't get to see. So it's almost like you're saving us the Travel. trip. But, you know, you're carrying us along. Oh, and it's wow. quite heartwarming, you know, to know that, you know, Africa has this all this Africa. potential to to that is yet Sudan. to be unexplored. I took you to South Sudan, yeah? Yes! yes. The people, the, the cows, the yes. blood, and the uh, yes. massaging, uh, whatever yes. it is. Oh, dear, Evie. Ay, ay, ay! That's a woman's hand, man! <laughs> 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 Would you love to try that one? Someday. <laughs> but what country was it where you went to the, where the vegetable farmer was? That Namibia or Kenya? Where? Oh, I think that is in... The vegetable farmer? The vegetable farmer. Oh, that's South Sudan. South, South Sudan, Sudan. Sudan. Yeah. So There was, there the, was another one. because you went to the, the daughter. Uh, you went to the restaurant owned by a Nigerian and a Kenyan. Or was it Nigerian oh, and That's Namibia? Kenya. That's Kenya. That's Kenya. Yeah. Because you, there was a vegetable farm you went there too. Wasn't that the lady who got Oh, yeah, yeah. That was, that was Kenya, yeah. Okay. Uh, about a, a, a man who moved from... America. Is he a chef? Oh no, I think it's a uh, back to nature. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, oh okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I've done so many videos that sometimes I don't even remember my own video. Please remember for you. <laughs> yeah. Now in Ghana. How long have you been here though? Uh, four days. Four days in Ghana? Yeah. You also four days in Ghana? No, an hour and a half actually. An hour and a half? <laughs> they pulled you in here. They told me I had 15 minutes, shower, dress up, let's go. <laughs> And I'm here. <laughs> what do you want Ghana to give you? Ghana has given me everything. I mean, you know, we're guests, right? And the country has been so receptive to us. Um, very welcoming. It's nice and warm. I don't know that you can ask for anything else. I think um, Mr. Samoa has been in Ghana for 15 years. Would you say Ghana is welcoming? Very hospitable, very welcoming, um, very open to very open to all all um, people. You know, we have we have other Africans, we have a lot of diasporans, we have a lot of uh, Europeans, etc. Uh, so it's like a melting pot, especially Accra. It's very cosmopolitan. Yeah. Bad for business wise because you see like. The only problem is that there are a lot of diasporans that are moving to Africa and they're trying to start something new, right? But I don't know if the avenue is there to support them, start up whatever they want to do initially. I mean, you have been in the business for so long, so I don't know if there is something that helps or enables the diasporans to settle back easily. I think, I think that's what, what the structure, what they're trying to do now is, you know, the government has pushed the initiative of... Uh, uh, you know the year of return, the beyond the return, etc. And and their whole their whole strategy is to try to bring diasporans back, and they're trying to make Ghana the center of pulling a lot of the African diaspora back, investing, growing the economy, and being part of the movement. So I think their structures and their things being put into place, and that's why you're seeing a lot of. Ghanaians, Liberians, Ugandans, Kenyans coming to Accra, African Americans, Caribbeans, uh, because the ease of transition is, 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 is favorable for them here in Ghana. Were you born in Africa? No, because three of us were born in, in, in California, the United States. Oh. But we all went to high school in Nigeria. We went to boarding school, she didn't. Are you siblings? Yeah, yeah three of us yeah. are siblings. Oh, yes, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even establish that. So, oh, that's true. So, yeah. we're twins. Oh, wow. And she is our younger one. Oh. And that's my wife. Oh. You know, he didn't do the introduction in this shot. I, so I, I was so confused. <laughs> you know? He probably said sister to the. Well, maybe not. I thought I did. Just just, uh, so at, 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 at what point did you decide that let me go back home and invest back in Nigeria or back in Africa? Oh, I've been investing in Africa for a long time. Uh, since med school, so since like late 90s, like 99, I've been doing business in, in Africa and then really uh, committed to it since 2007. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. But, but uh, investing in Africa is it profitable? No, not yet. What do you mean by not yet? Uh, COVID really was uh, hurtful to our business, but I mean, so many businesses across the globe suffered. But for us, it was uh, it was a huge challenge. You know. Can I find out the kind of business that you invest yeah, in? I, I, uh, I have a farm. I have a, run a, a poultry farm, or ran a poultry farm, until last year, and now it's a, we, we moved into piggery. It hasn't been profitable yet. But I hope it's going to be profitable soon. I hope so. I mean, other ventures have been profitable, just nothing sustaining. We're looking for a sustaining, sustaining sustainable business model. If you had the chance to change one thing in Africa, what will you change? Infrastructure in many places is looked at as a uh, 
I don't know, a bonus when it should be just a basic, you know, a basic. These are basics that should be on ground, but when we see them, we look at them as if they're, you know, a big deal. I, I think um, lack of education, because that's the campaign promises. But I feel like every citizen needs that road, needs that hospital. But that's what they do campaigns with. I'm gonna build you schools. No, it's every. It's citizen's supposed to be right there. To, it's supposed to be there. You have it. It's supposed to be there. What about you? What will you change? Travel within Africa. Oh wow. They make it difficult. It's difficult to go from one African country to the other. It's actually easier for me to go from England or from the US to a lot of the African it's countries. Expensive. And it's quite expensive. It's really expensive. Yeah. I'm so glad that I'm not the one yeah. saying this. Yeah. Because I always complain. Yeah. I mean, our desire is especially for our sons because, you know, raising three young men in the U.S. is, is challenging. So for us right now, the most important thing is for them to identify that they are not defined by just being black men. They are more than that. You know, we have issues that we're dealing with. The racial divide is, is real. As a, a mother of a young black man, having to worry about my son driving every day with the possibility of getting shot because he's a young black man, it's real for us. It's real. So we, we don't have to deal with that. So a lot of us want to come back home. Because that's one less thing to worry about. But it's, it's our reality. So I guess they need to improve on that so that a lot of us can be able to come back here. We want to come back, but the opportunity has to be there. What kind of opportunities are you expecting now? Um, you know, being in corporate America, my experience is trying to make that transition has been difficult. It just, yeah, a lot of times, you know, sometimes you're viewed as a threat. Um, because the person who's trying to hire you is perhaps worried that you might take over their position, so yeah, the opportunity has to be there. I, I would like to change governance and um, I would like us to start building institutions that outlive individuals. So governance and institutions. Uh, governance is very key and also you talked about education, so starting from a very young age to cultivate in the minds of the young ones that pride in who they are, in their identity, um, and also realizing that we are all one Africa, right? Because if you begin to see each other as brother and sister, the, the interaction, the dynamics are very different. You want to add something to it? Not really. Not really. I just wonderful to find you. Aww. You have a beautiful smile, I have to say. You have to smile more. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to thank Mr. Asamo for making this happen. You know, he, he makes everything happen in Ghana. So you are in safe hands. Just identify the problem and just come to him. He will solve it. He's a good one to know. Yeah, he's not a politician, but he's more powerful than a politician. Just like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> We're here as Africans to support our brothers and sisters coming back home. And I think it's important, you know, when, when Uche reached out through my brother-in-law, uh, I was excited because I lived there, I've moved back, so I know the challenges. And I think the goal is to try to make it easier for the next person, make their path smoother. And any, any type of network or relationships we've developed we can pass it over to them and that's that's the whole point at the end of the day we need to connect we need to be more united and assist each other to grow so that's that's the reason i want to say thank you all so much enjoy your stay in ghana um, please no I, I know you are welcome but don't go everywhere <laughs> there's some places you don't have to go <laughs> Mr. Samo will tell you that. <laughs> I want to say thank you all so much for watching. 
I'm still your one and only annoying village boy from Ghana. Moving to Africa is now a movement and we're not gonna stop anytime soon. So if this video inspires you, pack that bag, buy that one way ticket, and trust me, you won't regret. Thank you, and I'm gonna see you all in the next one. I have my peace out.